Hey, hey, Nick Unsworth here, and welcome, welcome, welcome. So what you are about to see is what we, what we call a webcast. So that is a live streaming broadcast of myself with Mike Koenig. So I'm right here in Mike Koenig's studio. We're gonna bring him on here in just a moment, but I wanna just give you a couple updates. So what you're about to see is a, it's the footage from when we stream this live. I want you to be thinking and looking out for how we interacted with the audience. There's a, there was a chat box, there was the chat roll, and I want you to be thinking about the interactivity. So part of this training is teaching you how you too can leverage webcasts. So the best way to do that is gonna be really focusing and paying attention to the content but also thinking that as we're interacting, be thinking from a 10,000 foot view looking down of that's what you're gonna wanna do for your webcast. So just keep that in mind. We do have a couple prizes that we gave away um, that's applicable for the folks that showed up live. That's why you wanna show up live. But um, also keep that in mind, and I really wanna encourage you too to go through the entire, um, the entire uh, video here because We've got some really impactful stories that, uh, that uh, we kind of pulled out of Mike towards the end. And what's really cool is he starts to share some of the things as to what created this. You know, I'm right here right now in this beautiful studio. You know, there's a three quarters of a million dollars worth of, of just video gear and just in the sets and everything. And this was created because of um, a passion for helping other people. It was created because of Mike going to an event, a Tony Robbins event that completely changed everything. And I think you know, while you're here tuning into the content and how to grow your business and your audience, keep that in mind, but you don't wanna miss out on the content that we get to with the pivotal moment in Mike's life that changed everything from, from broke and just in credit card debt to building an amazing life on fire. And you know, I share how you know, I had that very same impactful shift and pivot in my life that stemmed from events as well. So stay really focused on this, go through the end, be sure to you know, uh, reach back out to us and reply to the email if you're on our email list and just stay connected with us. We're super excited for you to go through the content, grow your business, make more money than you ever thought possible and live your life on fire. So without further ado, here's the tape. Hey, what's going on? Nick Unsworth here, and I'm a kick ass business coach, and I'm on an absolute mission to help you find your purpose in life, to help you love what you do for work every single day, to help you be the rock star that you are meant to be, to make more money than you ever thought was possible, and to have more time freedom so you can actually enjoy the life that you're living. I'm here to help you set your life on fire. Hey, what's going on? Nick Unsworth with lifeonfire.com. And I first and foremost want to welcome you to our live webcast with my main man, Mike Koenig's in the house. Hey, thanks, man. How you doing, Good man? Good to have you. Definitely. Right. Well, um, what I wanted to do first is before we bring Mac Mike back on and we dive into everything that we're going to cover here today, I want to first and foremost welcome you. I want to just congratulate for being here live. This Mike is going to be breaking down how and why webcasts are just really becoming the new frontier in online marketing because as there's more saturation, as more people are just uh, you know, coming to online marketing to attract you know, their audience and build their brand, we've got to find new ways to differentiate. We've got to find new ways to you know, get to the marketplace and be unique, and that's exactly what this is you know, about here today. So without further ado, Mike, let's just dive right into this thing. Let's do it. What do you say? Oh yeah, let's do that, and uh, I think the best way to begin is to greet our friends who are watching us right now, and first of all, I am, we're watching chat in real time, so the first thing is make sure you introduce yourself to the chat, tell us who you are, where you live, and what you do for a living, and we can say hi to Dee and Ryan. Uh, we've got Donna here. And uh, Randy, I know Lee was on earlier, Michael, so we'll, we'll you know, acknowledge you as, as the show goes on. Also, we're here to answer your questions, both Nick and I, but you also have some great giveaways. Yeah, we've got some awesome things going on. So yeah. we've got um, this very fancy Apple Watch right here. Look at the packaging on this. I know, Do they make this any bigger? It's freaking awesome. <laughs> it's freaking awesome. It so, is. Yep. So $399 value and uh, Apple Watch. If you're not an, uh, you know, an iPhone person, then we'll just give you the money. How's that sound? Yeah. So, so if go. you're fired up about that, <laughs> yeah, it might, it might get the watch. But uh, if you're fired up about that, just uh, let us know in the chat. So if you'd like to win the Apple Watch, we want to know. Give us a yes in the chat box. We want to know that you want to win the All right. watch. Cool. So we also have a couple uh, Life on Fire shirts. We're going to give away three Life on Fire shirts as well. Sweet. And uh, to do so, here's how it's going to work. We are going to rock some incredible content and information from Mike. 
uh, about webcasting and how it'll change your business and your life. And then also at the end, you've got to focus, you've got to pay attention because we're going to be asking questions uh, from the content. So right. stay focused and you have a great chance of winning the prizes. So. Cool. All right. So, um, well, let's begin. So I know it. you prepared some questions and I'm all set for you. Yeah, so what I'd like to do is before we get into the specifics of webcasting, I'd love for you to just share a little bit about what's happening in today's market. So, sure. so what are the biggest challenges your finding entrepreneurs are facing and why do we need to come up with new ways to find new ways to market? Well, I think the, the biggest thing, let's just, if through all of human history, if you want to be on top and have a tribe mm -hmm. and be a, basically a king or a queen in a marketplace, you need an audience first and foremost. Yeah. And throughout all of history, everyone in business or for that matter in entertainment or in any industry has got to figure out how to cultivate an audience, build a relationship, connect with them, build some degree of, of intimacy and with that level of connection, people are going to buy from you. It's yeah. as simple as that. So you've got to answer the, the primary, the three primary questions, which is, first of all, someone needs to say, wow, I really like this person. The second thing yeah. is, uh, they really know what they're talking about. And the third thing is, I think they can help me. Mm. So if you get past those first three, the rest is pretty easy. At that point, people are essentially going to give you permission to do business with them or ask. And so the best way to answer your question is, I think the biggest challenge everyone has today, as always, is standing out, uh, being able to generate some attention, uh, be able to not only get attention, keep attention, and maintain a relationship, despite the fact there are, there are more forms of distraction now than ever before. Yeah. And I mean, we're sitting in front of them right now. This is actually a, a great opening question to yeah. ask you, which is how many internet connected devices do you own right now? So right in front of us, I've got the phone, the iPad, I got a computer in front of me, and most people I know have some sort of a smart connected TV yeah. or an Apple TV or a Roku box or something like that. So go ahead and type that in. It'll be really interesting to see what the responses are. There actually is a certain number that I consistently see. Yeah. So I way over answered the question, but yeah. that's really the, the bottom line summary. And so, so one thing I wanted to drill down on is, uh, is, the, is the audience. Because yep. when I look around the marketplace and I see just who, who, who's really doing things incredibly well, I mean, obviously you're building up a huge audience, you're doing big things with, with lots of clients, we're gonna dive into that. Mm -hmm. But when I look at you know, some of the top podcasts and I look at um, some folks that have the lifestyle that we dream of as entrepreneurs, sure. it really revolves around audience. And so there's, to me, there's a, like this tipping point where once your audience is big enough, it goes from trying to get people to JV with, it goes from trying to you know, get folks to interview to everyone just all of a sudden wants to be on your show and wants to be a part of your platform where yeah. you know, you ha you've had Tony Robbins you know, in this studio, you've mm -hmm. had lots of, you know, from celebrities to top entrepreneurs, so tell us about the importance of audience as it relates to branding and positioning and, and sure. even making money too. Right. Well, I think the the there's we can go a bunch of directions there, but the net result is you become who you spend your time with. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've many entrepreneurs have heard that old saying that if you take a look at the top five people you spend your time with, you add their income, divide by five, that's probably what you're making as well. Okay. Yeah. So you want to spend your time uh, around people who have what you have, like what you like, and as an entrepreneur, you want to understand who your audience is and what they love, what they hate, uh, where they spend their time, and who they want to spend their time with. And the fastest way to elevate your value, your brand, is to somehow get associated with the people that they admire mm -hmm. and they love and they trust already. And, uh, you know, for if you're going to do interviews, for example, you certainly want to become attractive enough to them yeah. that they want to have something to do with you. It's also a fantastic way to create content and yeah. become an expert and an authority. So uh, once again, if we kind of go back to the original question, which is what's the biggest challenge that entrepreneurs have today? It's certainly building and growing an audience. I think the secondary side of that is you need to know who you're speaking to and who your ideal customer is. And it goes without saying that you need a product that actually works that people yeah. want to buy, right? Yeah. So that it's it really always comes down to those key central things. And then when we start talking about webcasting and why it's so valuable, 
you'll rapidly see that it is, in my opinion, the fastest, most powerful way to get and keep attention and also elevate your value and your brand at the same and, time. And, that, and that's something I, I'd love to, to hear more about. So, you know, there's, I, I'm often teaching on webinars. That's mm -hmm. been the primary form of, uh, of us growing Life on Fire, webinars yep. with Facebook ads. And so what are you seeing as far as just the opportunity with webcasts? You know, right. why, are you, why are you so fired up about webcasts and what's happening with them? Okay, well, I think the, the first, uh, if we just boil it down to the possibility of connecting with a massive audience, mm -hmm. first and foremost, uh, right now, 73% of the human race is engaged in some way, shape, and form online. And if you do the math, there are quickly, there's around between seven and eight billion internet connected devices in the world today. And when I asked that question earlier about how many devices, here's some of the responses from your audience, just to put this in context. So, um, all right, Lynn said she has six devices. Um, May Walsh, three. Okay, Don, over 30. Jim, four items within three feet of him. Michael, three. Six for, uh, uh, one, Beretta, has, okay, here's Bishop says 15. Five, eight, three. Okay, here's one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight, twelve. So the point is, um, worldwide right now, there's expected to be about 15 billion internet connected devices mm -hmm. around this time, you know, r right now, okay? That means there's almost two for every person on the planet. Wow. And um, I think getting back to what's most important, so first of all, you need to know who's your market. Mm -hmm. You need to know um, how to speak to them, understand what they love, what they hate, how to communicate. And the third is, what channel are you gonna reach them on? Mm -hmm. So if there's uh, a billion and a half people using Facebook every month right now, you know that more than half of them are, are on Facebook using their mobile devices, yeah. not their computers anymore. So I think the best way to reach people is through streaming either live or recorded audio or video. And if you originate with video, you have you can save it as audio. Right. You can right. also put it in a different format and reach people, again, in any format. So mm -hmm. we'll talk more about the mechanics of that as we move along. But I like originating from a webcast because it's it's just you create once, you deliver everywhere to every device. And I think that's something that uh, we'll definitely drill down in the your model of just you everywhere now. Mm -hmm. And so, so, so I'd love for you to share a little bit about the the specifics. You know, why on camera? Why streaming versus, you know, maybe a webinar or maybe audio? And just I'd love to hear just about sure. you know what's possible with that from a revenue standpoint, but also just yep. a connection and building rapport and trust. Okay. So for this, I'm going to actually bring up a little um, slide, and then later on we can talk and do some case studies and uh, talk in a little more detail about you know, the, the specifics. So everyone yeah. who's watching us right now is watching a webcast. Yeah. And if we look at the screen, um, I've got a slide here. So what is a webcast? Well, you've got video, you've got a chat box, and then very frequently you might have a place you can share. You, know, mm -hmm. you can do a social share. And then if you're, buy, you're selling something, you'd have a buy button, okay? So, and you can come back to us right now. But what, is cool about a webcast is in our case we're sitting here in the studio yeah. and yes we've got some more advanced technology we're using some broadcast quality equipment multiple cameras um, but someone can start out from scratch mm -hmm. um, on the most primitive level you can use something like Periscope right yeah. now or Meerkat or um, is Meerkat Facebook. still around? It is and they've got actually interestingly almost as many users really? as Periscope right. I know and is it true that Meerkat came out and first. then at first, and then you know they kind of stole it. Basically, what happened was uh, the quick backstory is there was a company. Periscope was originally designed as like a security monitoring system for your for monitoring your kids remotely. Oh, so you'd wow. set up a phone, you'd put it in the corner, and you could it'd be like a nanny cam. Yeah, and you could um, you know connect remotely. And uh, for whatever reason, they're like, hey, we're missing a big opportunity. So what they did is. Um, uh, Twitter bought them, mm -hmm. and when Meerkat was out, it was just like a fast transaction. Twitter shut down Meerkat's direct access, and then Periscope marched in. Yeah, it, it is. It's, scoundrels. It's, like. they, it, it's, it was a... Uh, yes. Yeah. I, I got nothing else to say. <laughs> now, there's a couple other um, competitors right now. Like I said, you've got um, 
Um, I think Facebook mentions, um, which you need to be a public figure in order to use that, but that effectively does the same thing. And there's another company too, I can't remember what it is, but I, someone's gonna yeah. come out the big winner there and then there's probably gonna be a niche player. Um, but the point is, with nothing more than your phone, you can do the equivalent of a webcast, mm -hmm. right? So the other thing is using nothing more than your laptop. You can fire up, open up Google Hangouts, and start one, and you know share your screen, share some video and a webcam yeah. with no extra hardware. Everyone who's watching us right now can do this. Yeah. Um, and so the biggest lesson in all this is we're no longer hamstrung by technology. We can, with the click of a button, broadcast to almost the entire human race for free, which should excite yeah. the hell out of us. So then, if that's the case, why isn't everyone a freaking billionaire right now? And why doesn't everyone have a following of several hundred thousand people? It's because they don't understand the psychology of building and managing an audience and uh, being able to generate enough interest and create content that appeals mm -hmm. to whatever that audience is. And let's face it, you know, if your approach is everyone is my audience, you're going to lose big time. Yeah. You know, you got to nicheify. And, and that's one thing with as far as nicheifying is that um, everyone that I work with has the same uh, challenge, which is they want to help everybody mm -hmm. and they don't want to nicheify. And the thought of just getting narrower and narrower and narrower, yeah. it always brings up the same emotion, which is like, oh, but you know, what about that demographic yeah, or like, yeah. man, if you were just doing marketing for realtors, you see how tight that business could yeah. be. But it's like, well, I don't want to give up the chiropractors and everyone else. So mm -hmm. what's your advice as far as niche of Yeah. You know, and, and the importance of drilling that down. Yeah, I would say the, the the biggest consistent challenge that I see and, and again it, you know, we both do events. Mm -hmm. We both are helping people become entrepreneurs in our own respects, right? I've been teaching people how to do it with video for a long time. And uh, I would say the, the biggest challenge is, first of all, they select a market that has no money. You hear this all the time, which yeah. is, oh, uh, well, I got, I got to get into or do something different because my customers are cheap. Or, um, yeah, I've tried doing that, but my audience doesn't have any money. And it's like, what the hell are you doing? You're going to go broke yeah. trying to sell to people with no money. So pick a market that is accessible, mm. that you can, first of all, understand who they That's are, good. Yeah. what they buy where they hang out, again, what they love, what they hate, and what their language is, and what their wants are. And, and this is another big thing that people say, well, people need X. And it's like, people, for example, they buy a lot of alcohol, a lot of cigarettes, a lot of weed right now, and a lot of other stuff. And um, Well, they need it. Yeah, I exactly. Mean, but know. that's because that's what they want. They want to be high. They want to yeah. be escape. They know it's not good yeah. for them. People are going out and they're eating horrible food on a regular yeah. basis, right? You know, welcome to America. Okay, we're, you know, almost half the population's obese. So it's, it's, you know, a lot of people know what they need. So when you sell them, sell an audience with a lot of money that's easily accessible, what they want, mm. or how they can change how they feel then you got a winner. And if you can create content or a show about that yeah. and uh, appeal to an audience or a community, that's how you build a tribe. Yeah, and what's so interesting is just thinking about the, you know, what, what they want versus, you know, I, I always talk about just, you've got to really market to what they want and then give them what they need. So it's kind of right. like it's mm -hmm. when someone, it's like, well, they have a passion to help people in, in a certain mm -hmm. area and they really, really want to get that content to them where it's like, I love right, personal right. development, but people, it's harder to sell that. It's like, yeah. give them what they want. It, you know, for, as a business coach, I'll, I talk a lot more about money than I would like to. I'd like to, mm -hmm. you know, talk more about the the give back components and all the cool things that we do. But to get there, it's like, I've got to market to the money piece. That's right. But that's just, you know, that's yeah. just how it works. Yeah, you sell and money in advance. In the end, the, what, what they need is mindset. Exactly. I mean, the exactly. reason why people are broke, you know, you didn't get broke by doing something over a period of two weeks. It's usually 10 or 20 years yeah. that got you broke. A lot of old programming that's just totally. clogging, yep. you know, clogging things up, the pipes. Right. Um, it, you know, back to the, the ideal target market, there's mm -hmm. something I, uh, I've got, an example I'd like to share real quick is, sure. there's a guy um, who we did some coaching with, and I'm like, all right, well, tell me about your ideal target market. And he starts to go in, and he's, you know, he's, he's saying, all right, well, you know, I, I do, I'm a coach for realtors, and I help women that are, you know, 55 to 65, 
um, sell more homes. And I'm like, oh, well, tell me about them. What, you know, what are they like, demographics, and all these things. He starts going on and on into it, saying that they're, uh, they're completely opposed to social media. They don't do any cold calling. They'll sell one to three homes in a year. And he's going on and on and on. And I was like, I'm like, dude, I'm like, is that who you've been attracting and who you're currently working with? Yeah. Or is that really who's ideal? And it's like, I think that's such an important thing to think of. Yeah. Who is ideal? Who would, you, who would you have that conversation with them, they would light you up? Who would yeah. be you know, on the audience here today that would light you up? You know, that's, yeah. that's so important to really make sure that it's who you would have fun working with. And yeah. so when I share that with him, he was like, oh man, yeah. you're right. right. And I'm like, well, who would you love to work with? He's like, man, if I could work with young men in their early 20s willing to cold call, willing to door knock, do whatever I say mm -hmm. that are hungry. And I was like, that's who we market to. Mm -hmm. Eliminate the rest. The first question is, do those people have money, right? Yeah. And if they don't have money, then I'd say stop right there, okay? <laughs> back, back to that. And the next one is, are they accessible? Yeah, so huge. is there someone who owns a relationship with them already that you can partner with or in some way, shape, or form so you would gain access to them? Because mm -hmm. again, um, you and I both know that doing cold traffic is expensive and challenging, yeah. okay? And um, if you could, for example, you'd find out that the size of a market has, I'll give you a real example. This is a real mm -hmm. life example. Certified financial planners. There's about 85,000 in the United States. Yeah. Now they're all registered. It's actually a regulated industry, so you can actually buy a mailing list of certified financial planners, okay? Mm -hmm. And um, you could get in front of them by sending letters or buying emails or, or whatever it is. And they or, must love that, by the way. Well, that's the thing. <laughs> they get a lot of junk. Yeah. So you got to stand out. So how are you going to stand out? How are you yeah. going to be unique and how are you going to be different? Well, one of the ways is find out who owns relationships with um, even 20% of all the certified financial planners. Usually, it's the 20% that controls most of the money and are the real implementers. Mm. So you might be a phone call or a relationship or two away from dominating, controlling, and being able to do business with the best of the best, okay? Yeah. And that's the, the whole point. Again, when we get back into webcasting and how to do that, um, you know, that's, that's really gonna be the, the magical side. So I think that kind of explains the, the, the we'll call it the galaxy or the universe of possibilities. Yeah. It's just general marketing. And, and so if we've got, you know, we talked about audience, we talked about just the, mm -hmm. the what of webcasting, what it is, and then I'd love for you to share just some of what's possible. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, for you, know, for, for you tuning in right now, you know, um, just thinking about exactly how can they really leverage the power of webcasting and what is the end game with this? Sure. You know, and and what type of revenue can come in? What kind of audience okay. can be built? So I'd love to see the the big sure. broad stroke picture. Well, um, the I'll sh go back to the slide right now, yeah. which is you know the what is a webcast, and I'll show you the possibility, which is if you take a look at the slide right now, again. So while someone's interacting, they're on the show, they're chatting, you build up rapport. Um, this is a snapshot from uh, a launch that happened just a little over a year ago that we did. And um, this was, I just did a search over a period of one week, and you can see there's 800 orders across the top, and all those were for 1997. So that's just a screen capture that showed up. Now, is that an always thing? No, I mean, when you start out, you know, you're not gonna make big money. But what I can tell you, the possibility is, when you create a show, and we can go through the components of a show right now, and I yeah. know at, uh, at your event when I'm speaking, I'll get into even more detail yeah. um, and, and really dissect this. But the, the bottom line overview is there is what I call three commandments of webcasting. Yeah. And we'll talk about what those specifics are. And then um, the, the net net is, let's say for example you do a webcast. So we're not here today, this, isn't, this is an educational training thing, but if it was gonna be like what would be known as a hard pitch, Closing yep. kind Almost of a like webcast. infomercial style, or right? Or, yeah. Um, if that were the case, what we'd have would be um, a process that we'd go through, and mm -hmm. the show could be anywhere from 50 minutes to 75 or 90 minutes or so. And then um, when we get to the presentation, you can generate. I, I regularly do webcasts that are generating around $200 per viewer average. Wow. Okay. 
And the reason for that is the level of intimacy that you build with an audience. So if we kind of go back to you watching right now, I guess I can go back to the camera or, well, the center. There we go. I'll go back to this camera. So right now, Nick and I are having a conversation with each other. But at any time, if we're presenting, for example, if you were doing your own webcast, talking directly to camera, you could talk to your audience and say, I want to learn a little bit more about you. And we can do that right now. So at the very beginning of this show, um, I asked you, you know, who are you, where do you live, and what type of business do you have? Now, here's where it gets a little more interesting. So again, it, this is basically a marketing webcast we're doing right now. So I would ask you, what is the number one challenge that you are facing or dealing with right now in your business? Please type that into chat. That's a real question. And Nick and I are going to look at the responses and what this would enable us to do is ask you and be able to help you specifically with your business. Now what's great about that for you and me is that builds rapport, yeah. provides immense value to the audience, and it also allows us to learn a lot more. So getting back to you, how can you use this? Well, a great webcast, for example, could be used to um, create brand new content. My last three books originated as a webcast answering questions yeah. And then I transcribed it and I edited it and, and from there it turned into a book which I was able to sell on a webcast as well and then yeah. turn that into a product. So um, a, a webcast can by itself be a way of uh, building rapport, creating shows and content, creating podcasts. It can be used to create products. It can be used to sell products, deliver products, all from the comfort of your home or yeah. your office. And what's, so with some of the launches you've done, mm -hmm. I'd love to, to hear a little bit about just maybe the John Asraf example or sure. just some really timely yep. examples yeah, of doing find, a webcast. Uh, yep. and, and again, that, you know, this is something that's a little bit different here today. This, you know, this is really meant to teach. Um, we've got Mike uh, coming to our big event, Ignite Your Movement, in January in Los Angeles. And this is really to teach and just to plant the seed about webcasts and get you guys going on it and to teach here today. But there is, to me, that this is something that's super exciting. It's something that we're doing with Life on Fire. Every month we're going to be doing live casts. We're learning from Mike, and we're um, going to really be weaving this into our, our, um, you know, our marketing plan with Life on Fire. And it really is a give. It's a content-based strategy where, you know, webinars, I feel like webinars, what's happened is you're giving great content, but it's, they're becoming just so... It's becoming so common to have a big, you know, offer at the end, and I think that if we can, you know, with live streaming, if we get it to where you've got amazing content, you can really have interactivity with the audience and really build rapport. You can still offer what it is that you have, mm -hmm. but it just—it's a different way. It's like everyone's zigging. This is the time to zag, yeah. and this is just to spice up and be unique. So yeah, I—I I, want to reinforce that because uh, right now, the most important thing you need to do is how are you going to get past the noise? How are you going to stand out? And you know, tell us seminars are still very useful in certain markets. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with teleseminars, um, but they're very common, they're easy to do, and so a lot of people are doing them, so there's a lot more noise out there. The same has happened with webinars. You know, the attendance level in webinars, the response time and conversions aren't as high as they used to be. Now, does that mean webinars by themselves aren't good, and by definition a webinar is just a sharing a screen and mm -hmm. a voice behind it? But when you've got a video and a relationship, your intimacy, again, increases dramatically. Now, does that mean don't do the others? I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying if you want to stand out and uh, be ahead of the game, webcasts yeah. prepare you for so much more. And again, we can get into some more of the byproducts um, that I think are important and some of the, the mechanics of them. But let's just say you do a webcast and you have one of your best presentations, you have some great content that's reusable and repurposable, what if someone in the media sees that and says, hey, I'd like you to be on my show, I'd like you to be on my podcast, I'd like you yeah. to be on my radio show. The, the speed that you build a relationship is considerably faster with video and our culture, in mm -hmm. fact, the world culture is programmed to react and respond to television. So people value you much higher yeah. when they've see, seen you in a video, and in a, a show format, even mm -hmm. if it's you behind your webcam on your laptop, if you understand the psychology even of presentation in your living room. skills. Exactly. Or, mm -hmm. you know, 
uh, bedroom, living room, wherever it may be. But it's mm -hmm. it's interesting. It's like I, I I think of that as almost like a totem pole where yeah. there's face to face interaction, and then it's like maybe a live audience, yes. one to many. But this is the next rung down. Yeah, and, you know, I think it, when it we get into the yeah, yeah, let's say if we end up doing the three commandments of webcasting, yeah. for example, I'll talk specifically about that yeah. because um, the again the bottom line is. Uh, right, right now, yeah. you and I are in rapport, and we are speaking, presenting, and teaching to mm -hmm. an audience. Right. So when we have a relationship with each other, it's important that that Nick and I remain in rapport. But if you had a face to face with someone right now, for example, and let's say you're meeting with someone face to face, we're programmed to remain in rapport. So even if we don't like someone, we're still going to smile at them, right? I know Nick and I actually like each other for <laughs> real, but. Um, you don't know what they're thinking or feeling. Mm -hmm. Now, you can be communicating with one person, 10, 50, 500, 5,000 with the webcast for free, and people are going to tell you exactly what they think in real time. And when you ask a question, the amount of information you are able to gather is off the charts. Yeah. And that's the intimacy we're talking about. Yeah. So um, one thing I think that would be really valuable right now, because we'll do the John Asaraf, yep. but let's go back to... Um, um, there's some questions that have come up. So Jim, for example, says educational marketing is definitely a great way to provide a ton of value. Okay, um, here we go. Stacy says reaching out to other businesses to ask them for their business, fear of rejection, even though I know I have a wonderful way to offer their customers an extra level of customer service. Okay, uh, story in you, not sure uh, who that is. Reach connecting to our ideal audience. Adam says finding time while working 50 hours in a full-time job. I get it. All right. Um, D says completing my elevator speech and getting the courage to begin reaching out to CEOs of companies 25 to 100. So um, and I focus. Know, I know Hannah. Okay. <laughs> she said fucking, okay. which is focus on completion. All right. Ing. All right. <laughs> Nothing wrong with a little bit Hannah, of fucking. Hannah, I think it's important that Hannah you're a good is fucker. Big on the fucking. Uh huh. Yeah. That's very, <laughs> so very, love about Hannah. very valuable. Okay. Good for you, Hannah. Um, it's like all of us. Yeah, She's always I, busy. She's it, always fucking. And you know what? We could go a long way down that <laughs> rabbit hole. That's for sure. Okay. Um, Make it real intimate. Yes. Oh, sure. that is true. Look at you. We took it. We we grabbed the bone and we ran with it. <laughs> all right. So Eli says, just getting started. Okay. Um, May Walsh de developing a signature program so I can launch on time in January. Nothing better than a deadline. Okay. Getting new clients from Randy. Okay, there we go. Chris says, saturation and competition in the SEO social media management industry. Good. So how are you going to stand out? Um, this is, you know, so again, we gathered some valuable information. Yeah. And across the board, all these things really, if so, if we were able to say with confidence to your audience right now, we've got a very fast way to stand out, get attention, position yourself as an expert and authority, and become competition and recession proof. Those are some powerful words and phrases, and yeah. we could just go through some of this content and say, yeah. we know how to get you there. Yeah, let's okay. get them there. Let's do it. So um, I think maybe uh, I'm just looking at some of my uh, slides right now. So um, I think the place to begin is, first of all, again, a little bit of the framework which we started on, and we could cover. First of all, the universe of possibility. Yeah. The second is um, some of the myths. Mm -hmm. And then from there, um, we can talk a little bit more about you know, the commandments. Okay. And um, in between, we'll also talk a little bit more about how we can spend more time with everyone who's watching yeah. um, us today, today too. So um, if I were going to, we'll show you this slide right now. and. I think the, the big important idea I've been telling people for a while now, this philosophy of you everywhere now, is that I believe we live in the greatest moment in human history where it is possible that anyone can become a recognized star purely with social media and free content. Yeah. And a perfect example of that is if anyone's seen the Gangnam style dance, Psy, his videos he had so many views that it broke YouTube. Really? Yeah. Dang. It broke their counter. And I can't remember exactly how many, it's billions of views, okay? He's the first one to break, I think, two billion. It's over that wow. now, yeah. So, and I can remember when I watched the video, a friend of mine sent me the link, and I'm like, what in the hell is this? I don't get it. And I just texted him back, I go, I don't get it. And I still don't get it. But it's still the most watched yeah. video 
ever in human history. And it's like, okay, this guy jumping up and down and kind of looking like a... Uh, anyway, so my point is, it is possible through a video and to be seen, heard, found, listened to on any device, anywhere, anytime, and be in the bedrooms, the pockets, the bathrooms, and cars of your ideal target audience. Yeah. Okay? So it's not a question of technology, it's how to. And um, again, just from a statistics point of view, if you look at the slide here right now, there's roughly 300 million interactive smart TVs. Remember when we were asking everyone, mm -hmm. how many devices do you have? Some, you know, one guy said 30 unit devices, right? Two billion internet connected tablets, desktop devices, three billion laptop and desktop computers, seven billion um, smartphone accounts, and right now, 96 million, about a third of the United States population drives back and forth to work every day, spending a half an hour each time. But 46% of them are listening to streaming audio. In fact, right now, people listening to streaming content and podcasts exceeds AM and FM listeners. Wow. Okay. That's huge. It's yeah. really huge. So that's the first big idea. In webcasts, you can take this and you can also branch off with the audio, right? Right. So we'll let's, let's that, take a look. Well, that's yeah. what we're going to look at now. So right now, and let's just talk about what we're going to do. So yeah. we're doing this training right now. And let's pretend that represents your content, okay? So we're, we're streaming this through YouTube Live for free. And when this training is done, we're going to put it on and populate some video sites. You yeah. can put it on Facebook. You can put it on YouTube. Um, it's already there. We can turn it into an audio and video podcast. It could be transcribed and turned into a book or put, distributed in any format. Um, it could also become an audio book. It can be distributed on social sites, so links back to the original. It can be transcribed, turned into a blog, articles, and maybe it would be enough that you would get a call from a local media station and say, hey, Nick, I saw that interview. I'd love to interview you, too. You mm -hmm. could get some media recognition. So I think... That's the big idea, again, getting back to the you everywhere now philosophy of we can create our content once and distribute it in multiple formats, multiple channels, everywhere to the entire connected human race, which is massive. And there's a key thing there on the screen that says finding you everywhere. Yeah. And that's one thing that I've been loving about. I mean, what's awesome is this content. Go to a podcast, and you can be found on the new and noteworthy on iTunes, right. which is awesome. But also this content being found on YouTube. And uh, at my last Ignite event, I, um, I, I did a poll, and I sat down with different people afterwards and surveyed them. What was so interesting is that I would always ask the same question of, well, how'd you hear about Life on Fire or right. Nick Gunsworth, and how'd all this happen? And the number one response was, I found you on YouTube. Yep. And it was for a Facebook advertising um, training that I did. And I was just on my couch right after knee surgery. I think you know, yeah. <laughs> I had some painkillers in me. And I'm just you know, shoot, shoot, <laughs> you know, shooting the breeze about you know, Facebook ads. You know ads. what you should be doing more often? I know. I gotta, Facebook marketing from your couch on painkillers. I know. It was, you know, I, there's something there. I mean, yeah. that, maybe that's the ticket. Exactly. Is, you, know, but, uh, you should retire early, man. <laughs> It's like I feel like the guy from uh, what's the guy's name from Office Space who uh, did Milton. Yeah, you know the uh -huh. the jump to conclusions uh -huh. matter yeah, or whatever. Yeah, uh -huh. <laughs> but that, I nailed it with that. But um, it was just wild because you we got found there, uh -huh. and I think that I'm a big cold traffic guy, Facebook ads. But the the thing is that we're at we're trying to find people, and we're going to them and interrupting versus this is. Sure, you can use you can leverage cold traffic. I invite you, you into my life, which is there's a big difference, right? Yeah, and and I think mm -hmm. people if they're searching on YouTube yeah. or even Google and this is popping up because this is all streamed through YouTube mm -hmm. and being found. So, well, it's so cool. Uh, Joe Polish has a great line. Do you want to be a welcome guest or an annoying pest? <laughs> okay. And uh, that, that is, it's pretty big. So, um, I think uh, um, one thing that we should do, mm -hmm. and this is a, a great webcasting lesson, is one thing that I know is from the time we started and now we have more people have joined us. So, one of the smart things to do is let you know if you've just joined us, this is Nick Unsworth. My name is Mike Koenigs. It's actually his show, but we're here today. We're talking about webcasting and how you can use it to grow an audience and grow a business. And we're going to be giving away an Apple Watch today because we're going to ask a question at the end of the show, and whoever responds and types it in Boom. can win that, and then giving away three T-shirts as well. So, um, shall we continue? Yeah, I think You're we should. What right. do you guys think? Should give us a yes if we should continue. Okay. <laughs> yes. All right. So uh, this is fantastic. Yes. And uh, 
This is good. We've got lots. And here we go. Jim Ross is just repeating that. Create one piece of content, rip it apart, and spread it across multiple streams of media. Perfect. Good. So, uh, and then this question, someone had asked, said, so what's FOC, F-O-C? It's focus on completion. All right. So uh, thank you that. We've got, uh, I can't help myself. We have some fantastic, powerful Fockers in the yeah, off audience big. today. A lot of Fockers. Avid so that's, uh, This is good. It's in your, you're in the right place at the right time. And um, okay, so moving right along, we'll talk about a couple of, um, we can talk about myths. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to jump to some of the commandments Ooh. because this the is going to be the three commandments of webcasting. Um, because if you understand the fundamentals, the rest is easy. Okay. And uh, then we can go back and we can talk about some of the other components as well. And, and we've got some case studies as well we can share. Sweet. So the premise behind the Three Commandments, and I, I have this quote here from Bruce Lee. It's on the screen. It says, I fear not the man who's practiced 10,000 kicks once, but I fear the man who's practiced one kick 10,000 times. The whole point of this is um, if I were, and, and I have ha you know, after selling my business last fall, I started a brand new one in many ways from scratch because my entire, or the majority, almost everyone from my staff went with the, the past company. And I'm like, okay, what am I going to do next? And how am I going to re, uh, reinvent myself, and in some ways without the same assets and resources yeah. I, as I had before? And I'm saying that because if um, you as a viewer, for example, are starting out either you're, you have a regular job right now, and you're trying to figure out how you can do something part-time or full-time to supplement, maybe get out of that, start your own business and be an entrepreneur. Another one would be maybe you're in a spot where um, you've been doing something for a long time, but you got competition um, on your rear end, or the business is changing, or maybe you don't like it as much as you used to, but you want to multiply your income, your revenue, and your value. That's another possibility. Another one is maybe you're, you love doing what you're doing, but bureaucracy is in the way. I meet a lot of doctors, for example, um, who love being doctors. They love mm -hmm. healing and helping people, but they can't stand the bureaucracy of insurance and uh, what's been changing in the political structure, yeah. and they just spend most of their time worrying if they're going to get sued or chasing down money that they've already earned, right? Mm -hmm. And they're like, I want to, I love being a healer. I don't like the way the business is running. Yeah. So, with that in mind, um, the, some of these strategies can get you through the process, okay. right? Cool. So, the three commandments are uh, number one, this is the easy one, it's get people to sign up. And like, for example, here, you've been um, advertising and marketing to get people to sign up for this. We've got people who are attending, and you had to present an offer. A, and what it came down to is a great reason why. So your great reason why was, uh, we're going to learn about webcasting today, and, yeah. and I'm going to spend some time with a friend of mine, et cetera, et cetera. So the uh, importance of this, it sounds real easy, um, but and, and it's fundamental. The, the key is you want to solve one problem for an audience. So for example, if the focus is we're going to teach you, um, you know, five ways to have perfect abs in 45 days, okay? That'd be a great reason why. Yeah. Um, five ways to boost your energy by ba ba ba. You know, it's five mm -hmm. or ten of these. But if you just go to anyone who's an expert or an authority, you can have them present their information sure, and they can repurpose it once it's made or interview someone who yeah. knows something you don't know, right? Yeah. So, And what's nice is you don't always have to have the content because sometimes, you know, I'll be working with someone or coaching someone and it's like, yeah. well, this is my passion, this is my purpose. We mm -hmm. get that clear, um, you know, kind of like how you reinvented yourself after selling your business. You've got a purpose and a mission with all this. Yeah. They'll get clear on that, but then it's like, well, I'm not necessarily the expert, and that's the beauty is that you can bring the expert on and create content and then splice it up and get it all over the place. But right, totally, mm -hmm. exactly. So the second one is get people to show up and engage. Mm -hmm. Okay, again, sounds easy. Well, um, so how do we do that? Well, today we're on a web page. Um, we've got a video box, which is YouTube Live, which is free. Yep. We've got chat, um, which is rolling right now, and if we go over to that, we can actually show uh, the screen so people can see us as we're speaking in real time. And there you are, and uh, um, speaking. There's a little bit of a delay here, and then over here you can see we've got our friends who are chatting with us and see what's going on. So um, that's pretty cool. 
All right. So um, the the bottom line is um, there's a secret to how you get them to show up and engage. And the first one is being friendly. So believe it or not, if you want people really engaged, just being positive and smiling makes a difference. There's a Harvard research study that says that you become 27% more likable just by smiling. That's okay. good. That I mean, I'm, I'm feeling it right, right. now. There's Isn't about a 27% yeah. warm and fuzzy. So here. the question is, are you finding us approximately 27% more likable right now? Okay, go ahead and let us know. Um, but but seriously, this is like a big I'm thing. I'm up to like 50 right now. I'm going to explode. Uh, yeah, we're, yeah, exactly. We're getting, uh, pretty soon we're going to be, no, nah, I'm not going to go there. We could get, <laughs> we get a little too funny. But what is important, I can't tell you how many times I've looked at people who say, yeah, I did this webcast and I just didn't get great results. And it's like, you looked miserable. You look like someone was put your hand in a, in a blender and forcing, it's like, you gotta look like you're having fun, right? At least be funny and fun yeah. and interesting. And uh, but but it's as simple as uh, that. Is, is well, so people don't want to be around sad, <laughs> miserable people. Mm. Well, some, there's something funny that happens when a camera turns on. We could yeah. go. It's like you'd have a great conversation. All of a sudden, the camera turns, and then it's just yeah. like you get pissed off. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, yeah. I mean, um, and, and I think that's just one thing that we'll get to. You know, yeah. all of the the things that hold someone back from sure. being in front of a camera, a mic's gonna debunk all of those. Yeah. And literally anyone can do this. Yeah. And everyone has a phone and everyone can get Periscope. It's true. All right, so number two. Uh, this is something that drives me nuts too. Uh, I've been teaching this for a while. There are some uh, big people who, the first thing they say is, hey all you guys. <laughs> oh, and they open up and it's like, hey all of you. Look, when you are d having a relationship, like right now it's you and me having a conversation with you, but if I turn to this camera right now, I am having a one-on-one -on -one relationship with you. And the most powerful word in the English language is you. So I want to help you with your business or whatever it is. And by having that relationship, this is what grows and builds intimacy and trust. And it happens very, very quickly as well. And that's, again, why video can be so powerful. So if your fear is, oh, I hate the way I look, I don't like the way my voice sounds, et cetera, et cetera, this takes practice at first. No one likes it. But there is actually a really simple strategy I can share with everyone right now. Yeah, I love that. Um, uh, I'll share it with you right now, which is if you're uncomfortable on camera, you turn on your phone, you put your FaceTime on or your recorder, and you carry your phone everywhere you go, and you set it down so you can see yourself in camera and you get used to it. And you'll also pay attention to how little you smile. And if you are, are on a phone conversation, mm. put your phone out, turn the video on, and look at the phone while you're talking. And if you focus on changing how often you smile, people can hear your smile. Oh, totally. They're gonna have a totally yeah. different relationship yeah. with you and you with them as a result of it. And they're like, you sound happy today. You will be doing comments. a heck of a lot more fucking. Yes, a <laughs> lot more, a lot more. Getting back to that, if you've just joined us right now, F-O-C is? Focus on completion. That is correct. All right. Get your mind out of the gutter. All right. All right. So uh, next one is eyes, ears, and fingers. So mm -hmm. this is a, a strategy. If you want to build a relationship, you need to know who your audience is. It's one of the yeah. reasons why with you right now, we've been asking you questions and having you type in, A, because we want to know, but also because that builds a uh, a, a relationship. A relationship can't be you just talking at someone. It need, yeah. They need to feel like they're being heard and listened to. And the more you keep people from their distractions, which is if you keep their ears and their eyes and their fingers busy, they're going to be focused mm -hmm. on you yeah. and, and working with you, which brings us to the next one. It's also the most powerful form of mind reading. So by building a relationship and increasing the frequency of the conversation and the amount of information that's being shared back and forth, I get to learn more about the audience. And this is something I love about webcasts is if I, I can come start a webcast that was designed just to teach. Mm -hmm. And if I ask the right kind of questions and find out what the pain and the wants and the needs and desires are of the audience, I can say, you know what, I have an idea. I know how to help you right now. If you're interested in finding out how I can work with you and help you out, let me know in chat. Mm -hmm. Well, you might find that 10 out of 20 of the people say, yeah, I'm into it. And you can say, look, I'm, I'd like to do a class. If you'd be interested in attending a class, I'll give you a special deal right now. The whole point is something that started out as an educational training thing could turn into 
a real opportunity yeah. and a presentation and a pitch that makes you money your first time around or your second time around. And even by the time you do your next webcast, you know who your audience is, and it can be an audience of two. And it's that feedback loop, that's you know, correct. and getting to know what they want because that's the the biggest challenge for you know for all entrepreneurs that I work with anyway is is always the target market, it's the audience, mm -hmm. and it's understanding what it is that they want. But this this is that this is the time where you can go through and create that feedback loop yep. and you know get the answers to questions and and then it, what's cool is as your audience grows and this is you know our our buddy John Dumas, this is something yep. he's mastered is you just give them what they want. So the bigger your audience grows, you can yeah. always survey and come back to right. whatever their needs are as they shift and what they need, yeah. then you're serving that, which yeah. is good. The, the example I like to share, it's, it's somewhere in, in my presentation, but uh, I had JJ Virgin in here. We've done mm -hmm. some webcasts before that have been really successful. And if, if you don't know who JJ Virgin is, she's wrote The Virgin Diet and uh, The Sugar Impact Diet. She's an amazing human being. but. She spent time on camera, and after the show ended, she turned to me and she said, I learned more about my audience in two hours than I've learned in 10 years of doing surveys with them. Wow. Because it's so intimate, all right? And, and real quick, I just would mm -hmm. like to, um, I would just like to acknowledge Lachey. So, um, so Lachey is digging you know, what's going on here, and she is fired up to be at Ignite. So we have Ignite Your Movement happening in January in Los Angeles with, with here with Mike Koenigs. And so um, this this is kind of like sponsored by the Ignite event. So this is meant to teach, um, but uh, Mike is speaking at Ignite. So we'll definitely share a little bit of information about that. Yeah. But I just want to acknowledge you, Lachey, for grabbing a ticket you know, to uh, to Ignite, and we're excited to see you there. Awesome, yeah, so, yeah. looking forward. Make Heck sure yeah. you introduce yourself to me and we'll do a little, uh, we'll do a little selfie picture and Heck pop yeah. it up on social media, so thank you, that's really cool. Well, that brings us to our, our next mm -hmm. um, element, which is props, yep. okay? So, um, even though it wasn't exactly the intention, but I have props here with me today. I've got the phone, you've got your phone, we've got the Apple Watch we're gonna be giving away in a little while, an iPad, these are all relevant, but one of the things that I've learned in doing a lot of webcasts is if you have lots of props, they can become metaphors for teaching and training. Mm. So, for example, if we use the Apple Watch that you're going to be giving away. Um, you know, one of the things that we're going to do is we're going to ask a question. Whoever responds first with the answer in chat towards the end of the presentation is going to win the Apple Watch. And then we're also going to be giving away some uh, T-shirts. So we could talk about the value of the Apple Watch right now and the fact that Apple is one of the um, highest valued companies in the world that's figured out how to not to create a cult-like status. How do they get yeah. attention? Well, here's one of the ways they get attention. How many times does the average person who wears a watch check their time every day? Okay? So every time they check the time, what company do you think they're going to be thinking about? Who are they going to be reminded so about? Smart. Okay? How about a phone? Why is Apple ta why are they so valuable? Almost a trillion dollar year company. How many times do you check your phone every day? Yeah. Go ahead and type that in here, okay? I'd be curious. Um, we'll get back back to that. Yeah. How many times? I'll tell you what the average number of times someone actually checks uh, their their phones each day on average. The number's crazy. Do you know what, what it is? No, I okay. don't. Yeah. I'll tell you what it is, but I want to see what you enter. So we'll do another one here first, which is passion sells. Mm. And I think one of the reasons why you've got a great following is you're very passionate. You know, you've got a brand that's life on fire. Um, it's it's about being passionate. Yeah. And uh, getting back to the goal of any kind of a webcast is to have the audience look and say, look, I really like this person. I think they can help me. Or, well, they know what they're talking about and I think they can help me. And if you're passionate about anything, uh, you can talk about, I mean, you can be talking about snail collecting and you could probably attract people who would be like, oh, I never thought about snail collecting before, but this guy is so passionate and interesting, I think I'll take it up. I mean, it's just like the yeah, strangest things. Totally. Yeah, yeah. It, it is, very much. And also, when you create a webcast, I think it's important to make it timeless. Now today, mm. the intention of this one, it's, it's more of a one-off presentation training thing um, but if, if our intention was to create, let's say, what's known as an evergreen webcast, mm -hmm. we wouldn't mention the date, the time, any political events or anything like that because what if 20% of all the people watching bought a product yeah. and you made $10,000 in an hour and a half? 
we certainly would want to say, hey, why don't I just replay that again with another audience, right? Yeah. So if it was embedded with, hey, all of you, welcome. It's Tuesday, December 25th at uh, 11 o'clock a.m. It is snowing like crazy outside. And it's too bad about what Obama said about Hillary Clinton and how Trump is doing. He just yeah. dated the whole thing, yeah. right? So you don't do that, ever. Make it timeless. All right. Um, and uh, earlier I was talking about J.J. Virgin, um, too. I'll, I'll show you this, this quote, which was, uh, you know, after doing her webcasts, what we've been doing now is producing shows that are completely reusable and repurposable. Oh, wow. So, um, and they're converting, uh, the numbers are insane, like 38 to 52% of the average viewers end up buying the products and wow. services. So um, I left that in here because I think, again, it's an interesting little case study. So, um, well, I've got an idea for you mm -hmm. yeah. because we've got some more content, but I think it would be interesting to just let people know about the event. Um, yeah, because, definitely. Uh, and I also want to um, go back when we asked earlier um, how many times oh, yeah. people ask, uh, check their phone. So here's what I'm going to do. A lot of people guessed, and um, uh, I'll, I'll tell you the answer right now. And then in a little while, we're going to do another one of these. That's when we're going to give away the, the Apple Watch. So this is like just a preview of what's just to come. Just a prep. Uh, exactly. Ready. So um, the average number of times people check their phone each day is 150. Dang. It's That's insane. It's okay? crazy. Yeah. And I would imagine having the Apple Watch is only going to increase the <laughs> connectedness mm -hmm. of notifications and and what have you so um yeah but uh but that's good yeah you know so th these things are these things are hot right now they are they're yeah, awesome i can't believe you got your hands on one so uh you managed to grab it i don't so. even have one no that's... my son has one so uh i've been thinking about it. i just haven't gotten around i you know i i have choice option you've got challenges. a lot of gadgets i do i have way too many gadgets <laughs> and that was the thing and actually i haven't watched I, I haven't worn a watch in 30 years this is my watch and I like leaving it somewhere when I don't want it uh, with me. Yeah. So I've been practicing not having my phone with me yeah. a lot more lately. So, so for me, mm -hmm. I, um, I just got married and my wedding present was this watch, Ooh. which is awesome. So then coming home with this watch, she's like, oh. uh. you should have seen the look on her face. She's like, you got an Apple watch? I can't and I was like, no, 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 it's this not. A it's, a it's a prize. It's a gift. It's a prize. All right. Very no, good. But, uh, but yeah, so this, this would be cool. It's a, it's a great right. prize. But um, yeah, so Ignite, basically the Ignite Your Movement event is uh, in January. And so part of the whole intention of all this is, is Mike to, to train and just teach you all about webcasts. We've got a lot more content coming up. But the really cool thing is what I'm so fired up about is, is that we've got Mike on stage at Ignite. And so we've done this before. It was uh, last December and the feedback was absolutely incredible. You're actually gonna hear from uh, Ryan Walsh who was there and Mike spoke and just lit the place up. He's the perfect match for our big event. But what I'd like to do is real quick, um, you know, we could roll, we've got a one minute clip about what happens at Ignite. So just wanna share a little word from the Ignite sponsor, if that's mm -hmm. cool. cool. I think that's you. a great idea, yeah. Right. I mean, that's the thing is, uh, we're here, we're providing, we've got more great content coming up. We'll be able to answer some of your questions. We've got some giveaways, but yeah, let's, let's roll that video. All right, let's do it. Cool. Cool video, man. I know, right? It's awesome. It's, it's awesome. I mean, Very cool. what, what, what I love about the Ignite event is that um, 
it combines personal development with you know online marketing and audience creation and, and, and building because the one thing that I found as a business coach is that you can give someone all the strategies and all and all the blueprints and everything to do, but if if you're not fucking enough and you're not getting it done and, and completing it, then you're still going to be stuck. And so what's so cool is we we have just a crazy awesome tribe of you know, just really hungry entrepreneurs, people that are just have a dream, something inside their belly that they're really excited about. Or like if you've, if you've thought to yourself that, you know, there's something inside of you or there's greatness or a bigger purpose or calling that maybe you feel where you're at right now, it's like it's uncomfortable or you want more, then that's who we attract at the Ignite event. A lot of, you know, experts, online marketing uh, folks, people that want to build an online business, build an, an audience. And so we all get together you know, for three days. This one's gonna be in uh, Los Angeles at uh, the Sheridan Gateway. And we kick it all off with mindset, and we drill down into that. And I'm just gonna give a really quick recap, but uh, we, we drill down into mindset, and we break through beliefs. So we figure out what you want, and we create clarity. The one thing I hear all the time is like, is like Unsworth, if I just had a plan, a strategy, and clarity, I could take the action. I could just like go forward in business. So we help with clarity. We drill that down. We even uh, figure out what's holding you back. So we all have these limiting beliefs that are just like these pesky anchors that we're dragging, or it's like the glass ceiling. And so what happens is at the end of day one, we uh, lay out broken glass. And this is I'm being serious. We lay out broken glass. We have a, a team that comes in and breaks wine bottles. We break you know all this broken glass in these beds, and we march over not not like a marching band, but we walk carefully over this broken glass. And if you do it with the right mindset, you actually, you won't get cut, but you have to really focus. You've got to focus, you've got to know what your next step is, you've got to commit to each step. And so we teach you how to actually walk on glass. And the cool thing is that as you're walking, the very end, there's this, a board that has your biggest limiting belief or has the one fear that's been holding you back, then you break through the board. And so it's it's a peak emotional experience, as Tony Robbins says. It creates a complete transformation right there and then. And what's fun about it is that experience creates so much you know, bonding and relationships in the room. And we've got so many people that do business with each other and get business at the event and create friendships. We've had folks that are, you know, fell in love at our event, all kinds of cool things. So we move from that into, you know, how to build an audience. We bring in amazing speakers like Mike. And that's why we're so fired up to have awesome. you here, you know, at the Ignite event. And we'll get into a little bit more about, you know, what he's gonna, Mike's going to be sharing. Sure. But I just want to say that, um, you know, it's Ignite Your Movement. Dot com and today we're hooking it up and uh, we're actually doing hundred dollars off so the coupon oh, well. code is webcast okay so and so do we have that on the lower third are we gonna show that I know I, I just found found out about that so they just go to ignite your movement movement. Com yep. and at the shopping cart enter webcast as a coupon code and they get another hundred bucks save a hundred bucks so Sweet. this this events a five hundred dollar event and uh, so basically it's being reduced you know, we have an early bird ticket for 200 but uh, hopping on it today, you can actually grab a ticket for 97 bucks with Ooh, the coupon code. Nice. So All right. we're hooking it up. Good. We're hooking it up. Well, we'll if you're enjoying this content, I, I promise you we're going to have a lot more. It's going to be a, even more interesting, and I'll be uh, really diving into the step-by-steps of how you can do very profitable webcasts. So um, this is cool. Well, um, here's what else I will share, which is... Um, the step number three. So, just to uh, to you know go through this. So, the first key is, of course, get them to sign up. Yeah. Next one is get them to show up, and the third thing is get them to take the next step. Yeah. So, um, here's what they are. So, the first one is um, we have seed the sale in here, and that essentially means um, if your show, your webcast, is about selling something, you need to be able to start talking about what people want and what they need early on in the presentation. Now, if your mm -hmm. goal is for someone to be just trained, you need the seating needs to be about what the outcome needs to be. You need mm -hmm. to, what we call, I call it the Tarantino, which is, t Quentin Tarantino always begins with the end of the movie first and then he shows, shows you how oh, you got yeah. there. That's how he grabs attention. It's an yeah. attention grabber, okay? So that's step one. The other one is presenting social proof. Now, I know today, for example, you have Ryan here who's yep. going to be talking about what his experience was like at your last Ignite event, where yep. I met him as well. And that is social proof. But anytime you're capturing testimonials, before and afters, it, again, it doesn't matter what business you're in, the mm. fastest way to build r relationship, rapport, and trust is to show your audience that it works. examples. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Uh huh. 
And then another one is the phrase, so that you can. So I'll use this in the context of your event. Mm -hmm. So one of the reasons you want to attend the Ignite event is so that you can break through any uh, past fears or conditioning that you're not even conscious of or aware of, um, network and meet some great people, learn some great new skills and talents that can help you um, get and build and grow your audience, grow your business. Um, you'll walk out with big ideas and just being around like-minded, abundance-minded so people yeah. and in a community, that's going to help you cultivate a winner's attitude and mindset too. So, yeah. um, so that you can is just a way of uh, showing the audience or the viewer what's possible. Yep. It, it, it's really, I mean, what I like about that phrase is it's so, it's just benefit driven. So mm -hmm. it's just, it's helping people realize what is the outcome. You know, a lot of times someone can have, you know, they choose the audience, they get excited, they're passionate yep. about it, they do the interview or the webcast or a webinar, but there really is, it's so, so important to make sure that you've got the language to really express the true benefits as to, you know, what, it, what is it that your product or service is going to do for them that's going to change their life or benefit them in some way. Right. You know, and I always, in my mind, I think of features and benefits as, I always try and distinguish the difference between a benefit as when you have that so that, the phrase so that, mm -hmm. it's it helps to convert a feature into a benefit. Yep. It's like, um, we walk on glass at the event, which is like, okay, that's a feature. That's like, mm -hmm. sweet, we're going to walk on glass. That could be scary, but oh. it's the so that you can, you mm -hmm. know, break through the beliefs. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. And, and just looking at this right now, um, the feedback from the community, for example, Bishop says mindset is 80% of your success. I agree. Okay. And... Uh, uh, there we go. Randy just said, I still have my broken board. So we've got past clients and customers here. The mindset is critical. Um, so again, the, the, clearly the message resonates. That's one thing. But also, um, uh, you know, building that relationship. That's what this is all about. So our, our next one is the imagine. So mm -hmm. again, if your goal is to educate, teach, or train, or to sell, you want to show the audience what the experience of having your products and services is like. So imagine being able to wake up and know that you have the answers you need. So if, you've, if you're used to waking up being confused and overwhelmed, imagine being able to wake up and feeling confident and courageous mm -hmm. every single day and knowing that you've broken free of some old habits that have been holding you back and you know they've been holding you back or you've got something in your mind and you don't even know what it is, this is an opportunity yeah. to overcome that, okay? So that's the imagine clause is what would it be like? And what's fun about this is you can almost hear in like real time, like I just explained the Ignite event, but hear how Mike, what Mike is saying is already just like more emotionally connecting right. because it's, you're getting the person to, you know, you're getting it, you're putting us there you know, mm -hmm. and getting us to visually, you know, experience what the benefit of it is. That's right. Versus just kind of talking at someone or just trying to sell. And I don't think there's anyone that really enjoys selling, you know, uh -huh. versus when you can do it like this, it's a much smoother way to create, yep. you know, you keep in rapport, I think, and then, yep. you know, you're conveying the information and getting totally. people to take an action. Yep. So another uh, mechanism that we have are irresistible bonuses. Mm -hmm. And what those are designed to do is, like, for example, um, when I am talking about webcasting, some of the challenges that people run into is they're like, well, I'm afraid of uh, how I look on camera, how, I, how uh, I don't like the way I look on camera, I don't like the way I sound, or I have an accent, or um, I don't like to sell. So what I would do, for example, at the Ignite event is I will teach everyone in five minutes how to overcome their fear of being on camera and connect with camera and feel absolutely courageous and also multiply their charisma. So that's a promise that I can make. Yeah. So um, on one hand, I could say, now that's a bonus for attending the Ignite event that I'm yeah. going to fulfill and deliver on. Mm -hmm. But um, the whole purpose of creating bonuses is to overcome buying objections, excuses people make for not taking advantage of an offer, okay? And that's, um, again, when, and people will tell you in chat when you're doing a webcast, they'll say, well, I can't do that because, someone will say, well, I can't um, do X because I can't afford it. 
Well, then you'll say, well, I've actually added a payment program and I've got a no questions asked money back guarantee. Those are all ways of reversing the risk or providing, again, a bonus to overcome that objection. That's really interesting. So, I mean, I've, I do tons of webinars and, you know, we have bonuses, we do all those kinds of things, but I've never thought about it as as the bonus being specifically for each objection. I have, that some is, of my products have as many as 20 bonuses because I know what all of the objections are yeah. and I overcome every single one. And there, it, There is no excuse at the end of a presentation. Well, what's, what's great, so, so um, you know, I saw the slide deck for, you know, I mean, you, you, you teach on this, you know, a, a lot. And I, I saw it and I was like, man, there's a lot of bonuses in there. I was thinking, I think there's what, 13 or so? Mm -hmm. And I was seeing, I was like, this is so smart how you went through with the bonuses. And I didn't, I didn't fully put the dots together that it yeah. was overcoming each objection, but that is, that's awesome. Yeah, and that's more of what I'll, that's more of what I'll teach. So another one is reasons to get off the fence. So. Um, this is a matter of for someone who's watching again a sales webcast and it gets back to this whole notion that um, webcasts are they're simply a um, it's a conversation you're having with an individual that's the way I think about it yeah. and um, in any business transaction um, people are either happy with the results they have or not. In other words, they, they're getting results or they're not getting results. So if you're happy with where you are, then keep on doing what you're doing. And if you ever expect that you're going to get anywhere else and think that you're going to move forward, that's the definition of insanity, right? Doing the same <laughs> right. thing and getting nothing. So, um, and the only thing you ever get when you're sitting on a fence are, first of all, you're just going to grow old and make no progress, or you're going to get splinters or slivers in your butt, <laughs> depending on what part of the country you're from. Spl slivers where I'm from in Minnesota, splinters in other areas. But the whole point is it's uncomfortable, and that's why I have this image in here, because that fence does not look like it'd be comfortable no, to sit on. No. Okay? So what is preventing you right now from making a decision that could potentially change your life forever? Mm -hmm. And that's the messaging. And then finally, you're summarizing the value and you're creating a lot of reasons why. Mm -hmm. So again, if we were using this in the context of attending your event, for example, we could create a huge list of all the reasons why you want to go there, okay? Yep. Um, and what the value is. So what I like to say is, um, right now, if, um, you know, what I oftentimes ask people is, uh, in the instance of an event, is, so if you think about the last event you went to and you think about how it changed your life and if you did a deal, just got one deal, what's one deal worth to you? So if you did business with one person in the room, how much money would that be worth? And if the answer is more than what it costs to go there, then it's a no-brainer, right. right? Yeah. And you want to make sure that you create a no-brainer winning situation mm -hmm. for someone to invest in your product. Yeah. And that's the way um, I want to present an offer. And that's, mm. again, the mechanics of, of putting one of these together. And it w so what, how w what would you say if someone at this point, right, mm -hmm. they're doing their first webcast, they've got people there, um, what about someone that doesn't have an offer or, you know, how would you say if someone that yeah. is in a different place? Great. So um, when I'm presenting the reasons why to do webcasts, for example, mm -hmm. is um, there's always a chicken and an egg problem. And some will say, well, I don't have a product. And then the next thing they'll say is, well, I don't have an audience or a list. And the answer is you start doing webcasts because, first of all, e if you just s announced just to people you know, if you look through your, your phone right now, you turn it on and you find... Uh, you know, just people you know, you could invite them to your first webcast. That'd be step one. Yeah. And we've got a whole list of people we're in touch with. And uh, you posted it on your social sites. And I can give away, like, I'll give you an example here. I'll give you another really good bonus. Um, so someone says, I don't have a list. So here's what I'll give you. Let me find it. Okay, great. This is, this is a myth buster. Yeah. This is another very powerful mechanism is you want to find all the objections, all the reasons why people aren't doing something. So this is, this is one of them. So if we look at the screen right now, um, these are some places you can post your webcast for free to get free traffic. Okay, so the first one is a place called webinarbase.com. Another one is webinarlistings.com. Another one is eventbrite.com. There's slideshare.com. You can actually upload slides with a link to your webcast or a free offer. 
Facebook has events. You can mm -hmm. actually schedule events and you could do a webcast a week. Well, mm -hmm. that's going to show up in search engine listings as well. Hangout events as well. Mm -hmm. So anytime you ever schedule a hangout, that gets pushed to the top of search engine listings yeah. very yeah. quickly. Amazon author pages, if you've written a book, Amazon author pages actually mm -hmm. let you post events for free. Sweet. That's like getting an endorsement from Amazon. And then, you know, in my order that I put on social pages in terms of value are Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Google+, Instagram, Pinterest, and Snapchat. And then finally, um, inviting an expert and leveraging authority or mm -hmm. offer to be an expert on someone else's podcast. Yeah. And all of those are, are nice because they're, they're a good free place to start. So again, getting back to if someone's just starting out, I say first of all, get on and teach something. It can be um, the five tips to getting whatever it is you want to teach. And if you've got nothing to sell or you don't think you're an expert, then um, reach out to someone you admire Mm -hmm. um, who's written a book, for example, and authors are very easy to reach. So yeah. are podcasters and say, can I interview you for a webcast I'm going to do? And th if they just mention you in their social stream, that's suddenly yeah. generating interest in you. And, and look, you can see the sit and spin and say, it's too late for me to start. I don't know where to begin. I don't have a list. I don't have a product. But all of us made a decision and built the courage and said, share, I want to do one thing. Go ahead. I want to share real quick the, so how I met Mike was, um, this was back in what, 2010 or 11. Yep. So this was when, you know, you were doing Main Street Marketing Machines, doing the big launches, and we were talking, you know, seven, even I think an eight-figure launch. So mm -hmm. eight, seven and eight-figure, you know, product launches. And what was wild about it is that um, I'm seeing all this happening and I'm just, I was $50,000 in debt, dead broke, and this was, uh, you know, 2010. And I just had the craziest passion and dream. Like I, I just wanted it so bad to be successful. And I knew I wanted to be in online marketing. I finally picked my niche with Facebook marketing. And that was one of these things where it was like, how'd you know it was your purpose in life? And it was like, I got as close as I could to my purpose in life and I just had to make a decision and go. And so I was up against the wall. I got started as a Facebook marketing expert. And I said, you know what? I'm working with local businesses, I'm working with going to networking meetings and pounding the pavement, cold calling, doing all these things, and I, I gave myself a job. And so what happened is that in that scenario, I'm working my butt off and I said, there's gotta be a better way. I need to, I need to build my brand and I need to, to get out of just the local market. And how that happened, which is crazy, is, is it actually is with, with, with Michael, uh, is I created the Facebook Mastery Summit, which was, not technically a webcast, I mean it was really a series of, of webinars and I built that up and I did some design and Mike was the first person I reached out to and I said how do I make, in my mind I'm thinking how do I get him on this virtual summit? How do I make this a win for Mike? I'm not the expert, he's the expert and so, um, and I, I just had the passion but I didn't really have the brand with it so I just reached out on, on social. So just like Mike was saying, the experts, the authors are way more accessible than you would think of. Um, one of the bonuses I'll share with you about um, with the Ignite ticket is I have this course called Six Figure Virtual Summits and I break this down in a step-by-step -step process but what got everything started with me was reaching out to Mike and just saying hey I've got this big event going on the the Facebook Mastery Summit and I'm gonna have you know hundreds of people live on this and to make it a win for Mike instead of me saying you know just take 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 and come on and let me mooch your brand I said that you know he could share his products and services so Mike came on, taught, and he made an offer at the end. But what happened was as soon as I had Mike, I put Mike's face and my face, and that became the ads. You know, I built my entire database. I built the list from that event. As soon as I had Mike Candies on as a, a summit speaker, and I don't know if you know any of this, but this is, this is okay, but, yeah. but you really were a huge part of me growing. And, and so having you on that summit, I then went to uh, Ryan Dice, I went to Amy oh, yeah. Porterfield, and it was like dominoes. I yeah. got all the other folks on board, and what happened from that is I had the Facebook Mastery Summit. I was able to, to take that, build a brand around it, and built it up. I built my email list over 5,000 people, yep. and I did a six-figure promotion, and it was at that point where it was like, sweet, I broke out of local, and I got into you know the, the online marketing scene, and then from that, within two years, I sold the business by 30. Yep. So. That was, it was great. I, I share that because it, it, it was that easy to just reach out and to make it worth it for you. Sure. And, you know, and I'll 
dive into that in the uh, the virtual summit course that's um, given away as a bonus. But that getting someone on as an expert that builds your brand. You know, yeah. putting your face, their face. It's the fastest path to building an audience, in my opinion. It's but, true. Very, very true. Yeah. Absolutely. You know that. Um, you know, if you go back, I actually have a little slide that illustrates this, which was um, I'll, I'll kind of. I'll tell the story, let me see here. Um, well, I'll put it in, in this framework and then we can talk more about you know how this fits into everyone else's life. So um, there was a time I was fat, broke. I mean, I was screwed in about 1996 and I was living on my credit cards. And I was paying my, my or paying my employees with credit card checks. Mm. And I had nothing left. And um, I had a marketing agency at the time. It was called Digital Cafe, and this is right before. But what wound up happening is a friend of mine that I saw go through a massive transformation um, told me about Tony Robbins, and he had gone from being a full-on alcoholic in his seventh year of high s of college, working a crappy job, to writing a book, um, speaking, traveling the wow. world, and he came and picked me up in a brand new at the time it was a Lexus that he paid for with cash. And I'm like, what in the hell have you been doing, man? And he told me why I went to s through some Tony Robbins things. So I just vowed at that point somehow I'd get Tony Robbins products. Yeah. So I, uh, after he dropped me off from buying me dinner that night, because I'm like, and I'm wor I work till 2 in the morning, I came mm -hmm. home, opened up my mailbox, and inside is a fresh, brand new credit card. And, um, and I'm like, a little more, little more breathing room here. But what, what happened next is, I walked upstairs, I still had cable, it hadn't been shut off yet, but I turn on the TV, and guess who's on TV on an infomercial? It's Tony Robbins. And I bought, I've got a picture of it right here, Personal Power 2. I had it rushed to my house, listened to the first one, picked up the phone, and I called to sign up for all of his events. And when I signed up for all the events, paid for my plane ticket and hotel, it pretty much filled up that card. And by the way, the person who answered the phone was Chris Hendrickson. Wow. This day is Pam Hendrickson's husband who worked for Tony. Well, what that led to is years later, well, about, it took me about six months to get my life in order. One year later, I was selling my business, my first mm -hmm. business. And um, if you fast forward a few years later, uh, it was Chris and Pam introduced me to Tony. I helped Tony set up his home studio and a couple other things, and he featured me in the new Money Masters. So the point I'm trying to get at here with the long yeah. or origin story is... Um, that picture, that relationship with Tony has been an unbelievable multiplier in terms yeah. of, to this day, I get people who still say, I learned about you through Money Masters. I came to, uh, you know, I found, you know, I found you online, I started following you, and I, that's, you know, blah, blah, blah. It started the relationship. Yeah. So, um, again, to just endorse what you're saying, um, connect with build relationships with people who you admire yeah. and you just never know who you know one relationship leads to another relationship leads to another rela relationship as well and I think what made you attractive is you were hungry and you were an implementer yeah and um, that you know never underestimate how attractive you can be um, and how much attention you can get and that's just you know recognizing your value and being able to say I'm worth it yeah. and uh, making a decision to just take the next step, which I think is a perfect segue into yeah. talking a little bit more about Ignite. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think that it's, what's interesting about the events and pieces is that at some point there's that, that I don't know if it's a breaking point or if mm -hmm. it's, um, it's like uh, we're up against the wall or where you just, you've acknowledged that you really, really want to shift and change and mm -hmm. you, um, you're just not happy where you are. You know, it's like Mike mentioned, the definition of, a, of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over again and expecting a different result. And what's interesting is that when you're at that spot where it's just like, you know what, M either it's the job that you're not crazy about or maybe you have your own business, but it feels like a job. And there's a lot of folks that, you know, get really excited, but then they build a job for themselves. And one thing that, you know, I'm really passionate about is helping someone get really clear 
on what their purpose is, what their higher calling is, and to literally, you know, I, I shouldn't say literally, ignite the fire within them, but figuratively, and ignite the fire within you and the movement. When you start to think about what it is that you want and how you want to serve people, when you start to think about that as truly as a movement, it really shifts your thinking. That it's not just about making money, it's about making a contribution. It's about, you know, with Life on Fire, we do everything from built, you know, school in Guatemala to pay it forward Fridays, and we, we my happiness with this business and my fulfillment is about the success stories that we create. And so what's cool is just thinking about where you're at right now and just just making that decision. And it's like you heard it with Mike. He had that decision with the credit card in the, uh, in the mailbox to decide to do something different. He invested in himself. He got the Tony Robbins um, CDs and then went to the events. It's like for me, it's what my breakthrough was before I reached out to Mike was investing in you know, Eben Pagan's conference, and I didn't have the $5,000. I had to ask a friend to go in on halves, and I was so broke getting there, but that event triggered something where I made the decision. I The house started to show up. I got to the event. Sure enough, being in the environment of the event, I meet not only tons of cool people who I still have relationships with, but my first five-figure cl uh, client came from that event. My first six-figure client came from the event, and sure enough, the person, Scott from Wisconsin, who bought my business was at that event. So all of that has led up to creating Life on Fire and my mission to help you, you know, live the life of your dreams and have a business and life you love. And why I'm so passionate about events and why I'm really excited to share this with you, It'd just be just a, another moment or two to go through why this is so different and why it's so amazing is because events have radically changed my life. And that is the expectation when you come to, uh, to Ignite, is that I have designed this to be an event that I would love to attend myself because I go to tons of events from personal development events to marketing events and what we've really done is we've really married the two together. And so what's so cool is, you know, if you're hearing my voice and I'm talking to you and you're seeing me, it's like if you just think of what is it, what is it that you want? You know, what's that dream you had as an entrepreneur and let's take that to a whole new level. So basically at Ignite What's so fun is that the very first day, like I said, we do you know the mindset piece. We drill down into what I call mindset hacks. So this is things that you can do to change your programming in your mind. There's stories that we tell ourselves. You know, how many times have you thought, um, you know, negative thoughts about cold calling or negative thoughts pop up about webcasts? You might be really digging this content here today, and it's like, how could I do that? I, I I don't like the way I look, or I've gained a couple pounds, or all these things. Life is constantly throttling us back. We are constantly being held back from the thoughts in our mind, and we go straight at that. I've been highly, highly trained from everyone from Tony Robbins to Michael Burnoff to lots of personal development experts. I spent multiple six figures on my training and education, and we teach the techniques that I've found to be the most useful about how to retrain our brains to really have positive thoughts flowing through us and to get what you want. So that's day one. You know, we take day one and then we, we go through the walk on the glass and through the board break, it's a transformational experience. And what's fun about that is it builds tight connections in the room. When there's really trust and rapport in the room with everyone there, then folks start to do business together, create friendships together, and it really creates a cohesion in the room. And it's really special, so that's cool. And I've gotta say, I know we have Randy on, and Randy, I will never forget, he was the most transformational board break for me, um, being the person coaching him through it. I remember him hitting the board a couple times. It was emotional for everyone that was watching. And when Randy, when you crushed through that board, um, something changed in me too. And, uh, and I've never been more fired up and passionate about this event as a result. So, so that's day one, so we do that. And day two is all about building your audience. Because when you hit that tipping point where you have an audience of followers, you've got a tribe, and your message is getting out there, how that's developed is when you're clear on what your calling is, when you're clear on what your purpose is. Because if you're just trying to make a buck or you're just working on you know, doing what you think is going to be the, the, the right next steps or the right actions, that's, that's just a way to get by in business. What I want you to think about is what's the movement that you're creating? And that's how we help you get there. We, we drill down into purpose, we drill down into target market, and so I want you to imagine and think about it, and there's that word imagine, right? So I want you to imagine if you had complete clarity 
as to what you're going to do in your business. And, and you went from, you know, my target market's this, 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 and this, or, you know, maybe this is what my products could be, or, you know, here's what my next step is to having crystal clear focus in a game plan where you know exactly who your audience is, how are you going to reach them, and then moreover, you even know exactly how are you going to find them. And that's what day two is about. We bring in big guns like Mike Koenig's here. Um, we've got Lisa Sasevich who knows how to sell and teaches how to sell and do it in a way that doesn't feel salesy. You know, at the end of the day, we want to take you know, your passion and we want to attract people to you. It's not about um, you know, learning to become the best salesperson. It's about learning how to attract the biggest audience. So that's day two. And then you know, as we move along into day three, what's really fun about day three is think about the action. We help you take what you've learned, the mindset breakthroughs that you've had, and then on day three, we're gonna drill down and help you leave with an actual plan. And why is that important? Because have you ever been to an event where you get so charged up and you're so fired up about it, you love, you love the event, you met some cool people, you come home and then you go back to the job or you go back to your, your business that feels like a job and it's like, what was this all for? You know, and if you don't implement and if you don't create new habits, and if you don't have a new support system in a new community, you're likely to go back to your old habits. So the cool thing is, you know, we support you moving forward after Ignite, and we have a course that, uh, you know, Ignite Momentum that, that, you know, that helps you to stay on track because our mission is the success story. You know, we have folks that come to Ignite, we get letters in the mail, we've got, you're gonna hear from Ryan Walsh in a moment, we get folks that, you know, from letters to text to messages, people that have had radical transformations and breakthroughs, and what's cool is that we live for those success stories. We come back and we have the folks that were at the last Ignite that we have on stage at the current Ignite. So in January, you're gonna hear stories from people that were just at the last Ignite the year before and all that's happened in their business. Stories of getting to over $10,000 in a month in their business in 30 days. We've got um, you know, Joni Young who has uh, you know, got a $96,000 contract, a 12-month contract, with her brand new business that she created after Ignite. She's then followed that up with a $50,000 contract and then a $12,000 contract. So we have so many stories of folks that are igniting that movement within them, creating more income for themselves and just crushing it in business and living what we call a life on fire. So what I'd like to do now is I'd like to jump to, you know, that's what happens on day three. And I wanna really encourage you to make a decision. You know, this, this event is something that it costs over hundred thousand dollars for for us to put on you know it's it's um it's we go all out we put a lot into it you know the ticket price is four hundred ninety seven dollars we are running a special so it's an early bird for a hundred and ninety seven dollars but for you to act right now we're going to make it just it's it's like what mike said as a no-brainer want to get you off the fence and get you to ignite so you can hear more content from mike and let us transform your life and business at ignite so what we're going to do is you know instead of it being uh, the total of the 497, we're gonna drop that down right now. Again, early bird for 197, we're gonna make this even better and give you a discount code and bring that down to $97. So that is awesome. And uh, I do wanna just acknowledge a couple things. Uh, we are not gonna be live streaming the sessions, you know, with Mike or the content. This is, it's a really special environment to be there, you know, in person, on site. And so, you know, my, my, the biggest shift that came in my life is from an event. The biggest shift that came in Mike's life is from an event. And that's what I want for you. You may have been to events before, but I want you to think of what has happened. What was the best event you, you've ever been to? And how did your life shift and change? And just think we're gonna take that to a whole new level. So again, I would love to have you at our Ignite Your Movement events. Before you jump down to the buy button, to the, the ticket, I wanna share with you just a couple bonuses. And the bonuses, um, the way I looked at the bonuses, I wanted them to be really um, something that's gonna help you between now and the event, something that you can sink your teeth into right away, something that is really complementary to everything we taught here today. So if you really are digging the concept of webcast, it's something that's complementary. It's different, but it's something that you can really dive into, get into action on, so that when you get to Ignite and you hear Mike's content and the advanced webcast training, you're ready to just take it to a 10X level. So I want you to have some audience coming into the Ignite event. So what I have for you is my six figure virtual summits course. This is one of our best selling courses and you know the six figure virtual summit course, what it is, is I break down and share exactly 
how you can create a virtual summit and I share how you can you know, go out and find a speaker, just like the story that I, I you know, had with Mike where I reached out to him, I share even the language, how do you reach out to someone you know, and get them on your summit? And what is a summit? It's just, it's an interview with another expert where essentially what you're doing is you're featuring that expert, you're building your audience, building your email list, and you're able to really tap into their brilliance and just bring them on and interview them. So if you don't have a list, that's, that's awesome. I didn't have a list. You know, I got some great speakers and I built the business off of that. You know, if you don't have an ad budget, that's okay. When you have someone on a virtual summit, you can create a, a joint venture scenario where other people cross promote. So we've got everything from the step-by-step -step training that comes with it. We even have all of the templates. So everything from your emails, things like the speaker agreements, you know, how you can um, deliver the sessions and interview them. And so we have it all dialed in. You know, again, it's one of our best-selling courses and that is just complimentary you know, with your ticket to Ignite. So it's, a, and it's also a $1,000 course, so just that one little detail, throw that in there. So the, you know, the ticket has a $497 value and the six-figure virtual summit is also a $1,000 value. So again, today you can um, have both of them for just 97 bucks, but you do have to put in the coupon code WEBCAST. So what I want you to do right now is just go ahead and click that, the, the image uh, below the screen um, of the Ticket to Ignite. And I want you to click on that, make a decision here today, take advantage of the pricing because it won't be you know, this price for very long. So hop on it right now, make a decision, join us, Mike, and many other thought leaders at Ignite, and we're going to set your life and business on fire. So nice. let's do it. And I know you've got an interview that you're going to do too. I don't know if you can swing around that camera. Who is See this we can sitting swing in the studio? Around. Yeah, we were going to, uh, you've got someone over here. Who is that? Who are you going to be interviewing in a moment? Yeah, so should I? Uh, yeah, well, uh, oh, before I You can do that because well, the there. other thing that we're going to do, we can go back to the center camera. First of all, yeah. just so we don't leave everyone hanging, who is that who's sitting over there? <laughs> Why is he here? <laughs> so the mystery guest is, uh, is Ryan Walsh. And um, what's what's awesome is Ryan's going to be Ryan's going to be sharing uh, basically what has happened to his life, to his business, when he was at the Ignite event. And what's awesome is that that's uh, that's how you met Ryan. Yep. And, um, and I was a lot really of really happy to see him in the studio today. So it was very. It, cool. it was a surprise. I, yeah. I wanted to keep you know Mike on his toes. I was like, hey, right. Ryan's here. All right, that's so fine with let's, me. And then you've got the, we've got the Apple Watch uh, coming yeah. up in just a moment as well. So stick around. But why don't you go over and get yeah. ready and. Uh, interview him so while um, Nick is walking over to the other oh there we all talking to this camera here uh, Nick's um, walking over to Ryan he's gonna talk to him uh, I, I will just tell you just to repeat what Nick is talking about is, is look I'm I'm not being paid to do this or be here I'm doing this because I really really love Nick I love what he's been doing I love watching his own personal change and progress and I also love watching the changes that have happened in his clients lives as well and I know some of the comments that I was getting uh, here in, in chat can't one came from Randy he says I took the leaf leap and became a life coach as a direct result of the ignite event David said loved ignite in San Diego last time the best part was taking time to do what I love to do and learn and uh, again that's the kind of feedback you get but I will tell you that the fastest way to just put some fire under your butt and get your next level of your next quality of life started maybe start a business pick up some clients and customers like Nick was saying is just attend a live event can't recommend it enough and then I'll love to meet you there as well and I'll be sharing some brand new information and knowledge with you so let's go on, go on over to Nick and uh, take it away man hey this is awesome. I just want to, uh, this is just so cool. So thank you, Mike, for all this and, and being such a great friend and supporting and helping out and also for you for being here. So, thank you. Um, so I would love for you to share, I just, uh, you know, I guess how we met and then how you ended up at Ignite and then just what's <laughs> happened since. Well, we met, we live in the same neighborhood and then when you were on a bike ride and I was on a run out by the bay, I saw John Lee Dumas and I recognized his face because I was on his email list and then later emailed him and I was like, that was crazy, I just saw you on the bay. And he said, oh, I was with my buddy Nick, Nick Unsworth. So I, I Googled you, found your website, and then didn't really think of anything after that. But then I just got Facebook ads all the time since then. 
And then what I do. <laughs> I saw this thing about Ignite, and my girlfriend Katie actually saw that, oh, there's this thing, it's called Ignite, it's about breaking through beliefs, I don't know, what if we go to that? And we were like, that sort of sounds like what we'd be up for. And so we went, and it was the best event that I'd ever been to. And it's so funny thinking about my life before and after and how different it is and, and how much better. And yeah. So. And now I, I want to dive into that because I think that um, there's lots of events, you know, and, and, and I, I would really would love for you to, to share just the experience of uh, let's just, you know, bring, let's, let's, have, let's, uh, have, let's have you imagine, you know, what it's like. So paint the picture of just what it was like just showing up and then some specific tangible details of just how the event has um, really helped you grow and, and, you know, create more revenue for you and, and what have you. Yeah, so the, the venue was really luxurious and there's this energy to it with all the people there that I hadn't really experienced before where there was a lot of wanting to meet each other and, and see if they could give first, just like everyone wanted to help each other. And it was this uh, very warm, met a lot of really cool people. And then um, I think one, I mean, it's a huge difference. I got my highest paying clients ever after going to Ignite, just from Ignite actually. And then, um, and people often say that it's like, you know, I don't know what happened. I just, you know, after the Ignite event, I just, I ended up getting, uh, you know, a few more clients. I'm just not sure, you know, it's, it's like, it's the coolest thing where, you know, there's, there's a connection. And what happens is that when you're, um, when you let go of some of those beliefs and when you let go, um, of what's holding you back, it's amazing where you open up space for more to come in and that's from that's relationships it's clients and you start attracting the right you know uh, you know the right deals and, and revenue to you so, so that's cool so yeah. you got some business from ignite so the community was good yeah and i didn't even tell you but someone i met at ignite i actually co-hosted an event with just this monday and yeah. it was my largest event yet and it was just yeah it was awesome, like man. so cool to see those connections you know i'd, I'd heard of other people meeting people at events like i know your story and and Mike had just mentioned how important events were for him, but I'd never had that before. And then Ignite became that for me, where meeting clients, meeting other people. I, I just went to someone that I hired this morning that I met at Ignite. So it's like, there's just, you know, one of the beliefs that I broke through, it's funny to hear about you guys talking about how sometimes you don't even know what's holding you back. Yep. And so I didn't go into the event thinking, oh, I need to break through this one belief. I know it's my anchor dragging me down, but I remember very clearly just thinking about how I would love, this was back before I made the shift, what if my life could be having only clients who are friends and only hiring friends, as opposed to my old way of thinking was, I don't want to be doing business with friends, would that be yeah. weird? And, and so it's just like, wow, that was going to sort of block me into this pr pretty miserable way of living as opposed to all of my business is with friends as clients and friends that I'm hiring and it's just what a difference it's so good because it, it's it's a difference between building a job for yourself and building a life you love and a life on fire you know and and I think it's when you can surround yourself with great people you know and, and with what we do at ignite with just we attract awesome people and for all you folks that have been here on the chat just Thank you for all the kind words, and uh, it's just awesome. I hope to see you again at Ignite as well. But it's just like having the right community of people, and the tide raises all boats. And it's like, you know, so how about, so that was from a community, you know, um, you know, way to look at it and what's happened. But what are, is there anything else that's come, come across for you as far as revenue or just yep. things like, so let's just say if someone's like, uh, you know, it just, ah, I'm all the way in Australia. You know, and you know the investment to come yeah. out to to ignite, and we have people from all over the world there. But what would you say for some like why is it so important that they invest their time and energy, you know, with us to be there? Yeah. So first of all, I have recommended to friends and family from all around the world like get to ignite, and I've never done that for any other event where I'm saying you have to come. It doesn't matter whatever it costs the flight. Like get over here, and so that feels cool to to be promoting something that, I mean, obviously you're not paying me to do that, but it's just like. I, you're not paying me anything. <laughs> um, uh, high fives, though. <laughs> yeah, high fives. <laughs> I'm very liberal with the high fives. Yes, and um, so the one thing, it's, it's so cool to think about how never in a million years would I have been a number one best-selling author, yeah. except for going to Ignite, started me on this whole new path 
where I'm, I have a book. I'm a number one best-selling author and helped me refine my business, got higher paying clients. And it's just, it's so cool to think about how geographically untethered mm. I am now, where I used to go to an office five days a week and now I'm doing business w even when I'm traveling, it doesn't matter. Yeah, and you know, it, what's, what I love about Ryan is, you know, Princeton guy, worked for the, one of the largest hedge, fund, hedge funds in the entire world. And you know what a difference, you know, and, and just had completely made some big shifts, and it was you know the right perfect timing to be there. And also, I want to brag you up a little bit too, is that um, Ryan just got on Entrepreneur.com, so a lot of what we teach is audience building. And what would your life look like if you were featured on Entrepreneur.com? And Ryan, you're up to what a couple thousand, few thousand shares on that? Yeah, I've never had things shared. A Thousand, there are thousands of shares on different platforms, media or uh, Facebook and, and Twitter and LinkedIn. It's crazy. It's so good, and and that's part of building an audience. You know, that's that's why we you know we're here today, just teaching about webcasts and just you know Mike just generously sharing his knowledge on it. You know, coming to Ignite to share you know just more advanced training on it is this is webcasts is a piece. You know, Ryan getting on Entrepreneur.com and getting thousands and thousands of shares. That's part of a strategy that we teach. It's, you know, what would your life look like if you had tens and tens of thousands, then hundreds of thousands of followers and people that are loving your message. And the key thing is, when you think about your life and your um, mission as its own movement, because you're really doing something that's gonna create change and it's gonna impact the world, think of how that changes things. You know, it goes from being about money to being about a much bigger cause, and that's what we do. And lot, some people don't realize that. They'll, they'll come to Ignite, and they'll be there, and then by day two, they're like at the microphone sharing, oh my God, this is, this is what I'm gonna do. This is my calling in life. This is my purpose. I can't believe I just discovered this. And then all the big challenges in their way before that seem the size of mountains are like anthills. Because when you connect with your, when you're in alignment with your true calling in life and your purpose, you will not let a little obstacle hold you back. You're gonna keep going and going and going. And so that's what I love, and it's what I get to do. This is my biggest passion and, and my, what I love about you know, my life and my work is I get to help you and help others create success stories. So Ryan, I just wanna say thanks, brother. Um, thank you, thank you for sharing, it's really awesome and I, I really appreciate everything. And, uh, and again, I wanna just encourage you, igniteyourmovement.com, take advantage of the special pricing we have right now here today and the bonus. So this, will, this is not something that we are, are doing or promoting everywhere. Um, this is something that for you hopping on right now that you're gonna be able to take advantage of it. So for you being here live, igniteyourmovement.com and then the coupon code is webcast. So I'm gonna flip back over to Mike, see what he's up to. Cool. All right, brother. Well, right. I just wanna say thank you so much for all of you coming out, hanging out and just interacting on the chat and uh, all of you folks that have won prizes, uh, our team will reach out and we'll, we'll make sure that we get you taken care of fast. Right. And uh, just in closing, just want to say that, um, again, great to have you here. I hope to see you at the Ignite Your Movement event and uh, you know, take advantage of what we have going on here today with the $97 tickets. And we would love to see you there. And we want to help you take that dream, the vision that you had as an entrepreneur and just take it and 10 exit and surround you with amazing people at Ignite. Mike's gonna bring the heat at Ignite. We'll have Ignite. some awesome, awesome brand new content, some new strategies, oh, some yeah. case studies. Look, it's gonna be a blast, so don't miss it. Don't miss the potty. Well, uh, you guys have a great rest of your day. All right. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Click on that button and join, by the way. Bye-bye. <laughs>